You know, so with the sample form, I'm going to keep it in the same file. I'm just putting a different tab at the bottom here. Okay, so you've got one there, you've got two, you've got three, you've got four. Okay, so it's all together. Right, so what does the first question cover? What, what's the focus? That's the key. When you, when you have a, a sample question like this, um, always, 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 always identify what is the focus. Like, what are they trying to test you on? Okay, because if you understand what the focus is, it's quite easy to um, create a, a solution to it. Okay, and the only way you're going to know what is being asked is by looking at the required. Right, so question one. This is broken up into a few parts. Um, section A, or question A, 1A. Right, so what does 1A ask you to do? the adjusted profit for the year ended 31st of December 2017 before appropriation. Okay, so adjusted profit before appropriation. Which types of businesses use the appropriation accounts? Mm, Correct. Okay, so you know this is a partnership question. Okay, we kind of could have guessed that because obviously um, we're covering the material that we've just covered. So we know this is going to relate to partnerships because that's what we had to look at. Okay, but in the exam, you wouldn't know because there could have been a, a company question, sole writer, they could have been mixed. Right, but that tells you that you're dealing with a partnership. Okay, and they want profit. That's all they want. So don't worry about anything else. It's four marks. All they want is the profit. Tell them how much profit they have before you share it. Okay, so in other words, um, so the business run, A and B run the business, do you agree? A and B want to maybe change or um, add a new partner or do something. Okay, so because they want to do that, right, they're obviously going to be looking at their performance. Right, so during the year, A and B operate and A and B make a profit. Okay, that profit may have to be adjusted depending on certain transactions. Okay, so now we have to go back to the beginning and we, we need to read each and every one of these lines. Okay, so what do we know at the beginning? So, Raymond, Tasha, and Roman uh, formed a partnership on the 1st of January 2017. Okay, that's important. R, T, and N. Okay, so I've, I've made a little note. We've got three partners. R, T, and N. Yeah. What else do we have? The draft profit for the year ended 31st of December 2017 before appropriation was 232000 but did not account for the following. Okay, so obviously that's where we're starting, right? Okay, so adjusted profit before appropriation. That's the calculation that we're going to be doing. Okay, we need to start with the draft profit figure. Okay, so the draft profit figure is how much? 232. 232, 1, 2, 3, zeros. There's the draft profit figure. Okay, the question said that this did not take the following into consideration. Okay, so must we take the following into consideration? Yeah. Of course we do. Right, this is where you're going to get the working marks. Okay, so you have to start with something because you're adjusting the profits. Okay, so the draft profit figure as it is currently is 232. We need to change that and we need to update it based on these points. So, a non-current asset costing that was purchased on the 1st of July 2017. No depreciation has been charged on this asset. Partnership's policy is to change depreciation at 20% using reducing the balance method on all assets. A full year's depreciation is charged in the year of purchase and none in the years of disposal. Okay, so there's bullet number one. So, we know this is now talking about depreciation but related to a partnership. Okay, so yeah, 20% is important, reducing balance is important, because now you know how to calculate it. Right, so when did I buy the assets? First of 2017. Is that during this financial year? Mm -hmm. When was the end of the financial year? Draw a timeline. Why? It's depreciation. Okay, so end of the year? 
The first of December. So the beginning would have been? First of January. First of January. When do we buy the assets? July. When? First of July. 31st. No, first. First of July. Okay, so start of the month. Right, so how many periods do I have from 1st July to 31st December? Um, July, August, September, October, November, 4, 5. Is it including December? Yes, 31st December. I come 6. July, August, oh, July. September, October, November, December. 6 months. Okay, so what am I going to do? Process depreciation for how many months? Six months. What is the asset worth? 20,000. What balance am I using? Well, what method am I using? Diminishing balance. Okay, it wouldn't matter if this was diminishing balance or cost. It wouldn't have mattered. Why? I bought the asset during the year. There is no accumulated depreciation when I buy new assets. Do you agree? Okay, so depreciation brackets. What is the vehicle's cost? 20,000 multiplied by what is the rate? 20%. Pro rata divide, uh, times by 6 over 12. Okay, let's see what we get. 20,000 times 0.2 times 6 over 12 is. 2000. Okay, that's the depreciation. Obviously, depreciation is a negative, so make that a negative. Put that in brackets. Okay, okay uh, that, that was what we read there. A full year's depreciation is charged in the year of purchase and none in the year of disposal. Okay, well, that's just looking at if you purchase it. But is that not straight line depreciation? Yeah, well, straight line depreciation looks at what? The costs. Okay, what does reducing balance use? The carrying value. Is the cost and the oh, carrying okay. value the same? Yeah. Yes, because I don't have any accumulated depreciation. Okay, it'll always be the same in the first year that you buy the assets. Okay. Um, I don't know why they mentioned this here. They say a full year depreciation is charged in the year of the purchase but you haven't used this asset for the full year. Right, so I would definitely want to pro rata that. Mm -hmm. Okay, it wouldn't be accurate to account for a full year's worth of depreciation if you've only used it for six months. Okay, I don't know if they're trying to tell us that we should produce, not produce, but provide for a full year's worth of depreciation. Okay, that bullet, they don't have to really say. Okay, I'm just gonna use the first top box. Okay, what does number two say? Some inventory which has been valued at, at a cost of 15, had been damaged, the markup of inventory is 100%. Damaged inventory could only be sold for 20% of the normal selling price. Okay, so what do we have here? Damaged goods. Damaged goods and we have the sale price. Okay, so do you agree? I need to know what these goods are actually worth. Okay, so this is a separate maths calculation, inventory. Okay, so how much is the inventory worth in terms of value? Value-wise, how much is the inventory worth? 15 of the markup. 15,000 15, is the value. Do you agree? That's what I've recorded. Okay, that's what they've said in the question. They said you have inventory valued at cost 15,000. Okay, then they say that the markup on inventory is 100% and the damaged inventory could only be sold for 20% of the selling price. Okay, so is this the selling price or the cost price? This 15,000, what did they say? The it's the cost. cost price. Okay, so what is the selling price of 15,000? Well, let's work it out. 15,000 times, okay, what is the markup? 100%. 100%. So 100 over 100, which is 15,000. Okay, that's the markup. Right, selling price equals cost price plus markup. 
plus markup. So selling price equals 15,000 plus 15,000 gives you 30,000. Okay, so do I know how much this inventory sells for? Yes. The inventory sells for 30,000. Is the inventory worth 30,000? Mm, no. It's only worth 20%. Yes. Okay, it's only worth 20%. Okay, so times 20% equals 30,000 times 0 0.2 gives you 6,000. So what is the inventory actually worth? 6,000. 6, That's the true value of the inventory. How much is this inventory currently worth? 15,000. What must we do to this? Decrease it. Decrease the inventory, exactly. Okay, so write off of value for inventory and the write off of value of inventory is going to be minus 9000. Okay, how do I get minus 9000? Well, 15 minus 6 gives me 9000. Right, so I need to remove 9,000 Rand worth of value from this stock because this stock is actually worth 6,000. Should I show that calculation? Of course. Yeah. What we have here is showing the working because why I read the question and I interpreted what was being said. Okay, so I read the question, I know it's worth 15. I read the question, I know what the markup is. If I do a calculation, I know what the selling price is. Okay, the reason why I calculated the selling price is because the question said 20% of the selling price is what the damaged goods can be sold for. Okay, and that's why I've got 6,000. Right, so do you know what the adjusted profit is now? Yes, we just need to tally up. Okay, so what am I going to do? Work out the adjusted profits. New adjusted profit is this minus that. Right, so 221000 is the adjusted profit after taking that stuff into consideration. Okay. When it covers question one A.
Right, what is B asked for? Prepare the partnership appropriation accounts for the year ended 31st of December 2017. Right, so that is a tier count. Do you agree? Okay, so exam technique, you read the required. The required tells you to draw up a template. Okay, what template? Well, the general ledger. Right, so now I know I'm going to be drawing up something that looks like that. And I know this is called appropriation. Okay, so the appropriation account, just to revise, is the account that is used to distribute profits in the business to its partners. Okay, so we need to look at the additional information to see what we've got. Okay, the shares profits. Yeah, shares profit between the partners. Okay, because remember, partners more than one appropriate means to share. Okay, distribute space. Okay, on the first of January twenty seventeen, Ramon, Tasha, and Norman had introduced capital of 600000 in their agreed profits and last sharing ratio of 3 to 2 to 1, respectively. Okay, so this is a continuation of what we spoke about earlier. So let's highlight this. Okay, you know there are three partners. The total capital amounts to how much? 600000 600000 Obviously, that comes from all of them, right? Yeah. Okay. That's the total. Um, how much does each partner own of the business? Three to two to one. Three to two to one. So how many do we have in total? Six. Yeah. So three over six goes to who? R, okay. eh? Yeah, so let's write that down. Three over six goes to the first partner. Oops. Copy. Two over six to the next. 1 over 6 for the last. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. That's the profit sharing. Okay, what else? Um, okay, the other terms of the partnership agreement were as follows. Interest F of 6% per annum is not paid on the opening capital account balances. Uh, is to be paid. Oh, sorry, is to be paid. Okay, right, so 6% is to be paid to who? the owners. Right, so what is that going to do to appropriation? It's going to decrease the profit. Okay, so it's a continuation. So this figure needs to go where? Here. Okay, let's put it in. Adjusted profits. Okay, so the adjusted profit that we just worked out is 2 to 1. Right, they're telling us here in bullet number 2 that um, interest of 6% is paid on the opening capital. Okay, so interest on capital. What is interest on capital going to do to the profits? Increase. Oh, no. yeah. Decrease, because the partnership must pay the interest on capital to the partners. Oh. Okay, so that means that the interest on capital is going to come out of the profits and it's going to be paid to the partners. So on this side, you're going to have interest on Capital. Interest on capital is a calculation. 600,000 times 9%. Was it 9%? No. It was 6. 6%. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's the interest on capital, whatever that is. 600 times 0 0.6. No, 06, 06, 6%. Six okay, it's 36,000. That counts out of the profit. Okay, there's the first bullet.
Okay, so just remember interest on capital will take out of the profit. Why? Because the profit has to pay the partners. Okay. What's next? So is it that calculation is part of that? So yes, yeah, show the calculation um, just next to or underneath the just capital. You have enough space so you can show it there instead of showing it separately. Just write it down as is. Okay, what's next? What's the what does bullet number two say? Each partner is to take drawings of ten thousand per annum. Interest is to be charged on total annual drawings at four percent per annum. Okay, so do the partners draw from the business? Yeah. Yes. What is that going to do to um, the appropriation? It decreases. Uh, well. It would decrease what they've taken, but if they took, did they say that this was recorded or not? Each partner is to take drawings of 10,000 per annum. Interest is to be charged on the total annual drawings at 4%. Okay, but if they're drawing, if they're drawing from the business, it would have been debit drawing, debit drawings credit bank. Okay, that would have been the drawings. Right, so side note here, asterisk, drawings. Drawings equals, how much do they draw? 10,000. 10,000 times three partners, right? Mm. Per annum, each partner, yes. Times three. Okay, so how much do they draw? 30,000. Okay, we're going to charge interest at... How much percent? Four percent. Okay, so what is that going to give us? Thirty thousand times naught comma o four four percent. One thousand. Uh, is that right? Eh? Thirty thousand times. Yeah, that's right. Okay, one thousand two hundred. Okay, interest on drawings. Is that going to add to the cup uh, to the business's profit to the partnership profit? Yes. Okay, because oh, the partners, the partners pay the business. Okay, so that's going to go on this side. Interest on drawings. Interest on drawings in brackets, 30,000 times 4%. Okay, so that's Is that right? Yeah. Okay. What's next? Each partner is to take drawings. Um, it's a case that we just did that. Um, Norman is to receive a salary of ten of a thousand per month. Okay, so per month, that's times twelve, eh? Hey? Uh, is to receive a salary. So the salary would have come out of the adjusted profit, so it'll go here. Salary, Norman. Mm. Brackets, how much? A thousand times twelve. Okay, is 12,000. Here's it. That's it. Okay, and then we need to show a split. Okay, which side's bigger? This side's obviously bigger. Sum up. There. There. And then we need to split the profit. Okay, so to be shared, what is the profit to be shared? It's going to be this amount minus those two figures. Okay, so that gives me that 17422. Right, so 174200 needs to be shared between R, T, and N according to the ratio. So why did you write it like that? Because we need to split it. Okay. Okay, so how much does R get? 3 over 6. How much does T get? 2, two over 6. How much does N get? 1 over 6. Okay, so capital 
R capital T capital N. Okay, so R gets one over R gets three over six of that. Three over six. Okay, two over six, one over six. That's the appropriation account. Okay, that's a T account. Remember, your textbook uses this format. Okay, remember you had an asterisk next to that example. Okay, so I think they're probably going to want this. Okay, but either or, like I mean, an appropriation account is an appropriation account. This is acceptable, but they're probably not going to want this. So let's give it to them in the right format. Page twenty-three. No. Chapter 23, page 196, chapter 23, format. Okay, so just be careful with that. But right. I'm not just because obviously they want that one. Oh, no, leave the working, that's a working. Don't, don't rub it out, it's a working. It's a working, now you just write down an answer. It's a working, leave it as is. It's a working. Okay, because all the workings are here. See, the nice thing about this is you can think about it, debit and credit. You don't have to study it. This you need to learn. See, that's why I'm referring to it because it's add interest, less salary, less interest on capital, and then share the profits. Okay, so this is to study. So. I'm going to just literally copy paste what I have here. Just read it and, and reproduce the answer. Okay, so appropriation accounts. Okay, obviously for the year ended for the business. Okay, so they start with profit for the year. In brackets, adjusted from question 1a okay and then I'm going to show it's two columns so you're going to need these two columns here okay so what is the profit for the year there's the figure okay then add Add interest on drawings, and then the figure is what? Where's my interest in drawings? Here's my interest in drawings. Where do they put this? Okay, they put this in this column. Uh, but I see they show it. They show it separate. Okay, so this is what they want. Um, you're gonna you're gonna write down partner. Partner R, uh, write in their names. What are their names? Ramen. Partner T, partner N. Okay, so uh, if it's interest on drawings, it was three of them. So divide that by three, it'll be 400, 400, 400. So they, they want the disclosure like this 400, 400, 400. The total 1,200. Okay, like that. The total is the total. Partner, partner, partner.
Okay, then they want a salary, so less salary to uh, what was who was the guy if they got the salary in? Let's just write in their whole names. I'm just using the first letter of their name, Norman. Salary to N. I'm lessing the salary, so that'll be a negative. Uh, we worked it out earlier, negative that figure. Let's just remember those figures put in brackets. Brackets mean negative in accounting. Right, then in terms of layout, then they want the capital, so less interest on capital. Okay, this one you can't split because it didn't tell you how much each cap uh, how much each partner contributed. But if you look at the question, they just told you that all the partners contributed six hundred thousand. Okay, so you wouldn't be able to show this separately. You would just show it as is. So Minus where's our interest amount? There's our interest amount, the thirty-six thousand. Okay, what we calculated earlier. And then the last bit is to show the profit sharing, which we already calculated. That's what we did up here. And that's what we're going to show there. Okay, so uh, we're going to need one extra, two extra lines here. Okay, so they want you to show it like this, share of profits, share of profits, uh, N, or R, R, T, and N. Okay, so the share of the profit will be a minus. It is a minus, say, hey? yes. Okay, so negative that figure. R gets this figure. N T gets that figure. N gets that figure. Okay, we worked it out earlier. Don't have to work it out again. Right, and then what do you show you at the bottom? Zero and zero. That should add up to zero, does it? Yes, it does. Perfect. Yes, yeah, so that's the important column. Right, so that's the format. That's the format that you asterisked um, that you were going to write down as an example. Okay, now you've got one here. Even. And that covers most of the uh, different line items. Okay. Well, it's not such a bad question. How much is that? Like six marks. Okay. So a few calculations and then just disclosure. Okay. How's the time? Are we okay? Can we do another question? Yeah. Yeah, let's do see. Explain why partners min value goodwill and revalue the assets when your partner retires. Okay, that's a theory question. Um, we can go back to the whole goodwill discussion. Do you remember what goodwill is? Yeah, it's like the intangible asset. Perfect. Okay, it's intangible because you can't measure it. It's only measured when someone's willing to buy a share of the business. Okay, so that was what goodwill is in a nutshell. Um, here's the valuation part. So let's just read it again. Explain why partners may value goodwill and revalue the assets when one partner retires. Okay, so when one partner retires, what is what do we do? We need to measure the value of the partnership, yeah, the business exactly. So C. Okay, so bullet number one. I don't know. Do they mind bullets? They don't. Okay, so just write it in the paragraph. 
Okay, so I'm just going to write bullets because this is what you need to express. Okay, so when the partner retires, comma, we need to value the partnership at date of retirement. Right, so obviously there is a retirement here. Okay, the partner is leaving the business. If a partner leaves the business, we need to make sure that we know how much each partner is entitled to. Okay, how much is A worth, how much is B worth in terms of the business? Okay, so they said explain why partners may value goodwill and revalue the assets when one partner retires. Okay, so let's talk about the revalue stuff first. All assets must be valued according to the current value now, okay, today, in the actual, in the actual business. Okay, so that's up to Okay, so that's something that we need to look at right now. We need to look at what? The value today. Okay, what is the value today in terms of the actual assets? Okay, the only way I can do that is by identifying what the market value is. Okay, that's why they spoke about revalue. Why must we revalue it? Okay, so we must revalue the assets and allocate the benefit, allocate the benefit to the partners. And that's what we're doing here. Okay, so now we've discussed the revalue part. Okay, we just need to discuss the goodwill side of things. Okay, this is out of how many marks? It's out of three marks. Okay, so we've said why we need to do this. We've said what the revaluation is. And now we just need to describe what goodwill is. Okay, so I'm going to use um, the definition in the textbook here on page 207. Goodwill is the cost of acquiring a business less the total value of the assets and liabilities that have been purchased. Okay, so they're saying, explain why partners may value goodwill. So why can they value goodwill? Well, goodwill is the intangible, to use the word that you mentioned earlier, goodwill is the intangible assets that a business generates over time. Okay, so the goodwill that we have in the business, the only reason why it's there is because this business has been operating. So if this business has been operating for two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, twenty years, um, this business should have goodwill. Okay, they might not, but they should. But if they've been operating for an extended period of time, they've built up value, but value that you can't measure. We only can measure goodwill once you've revalued the business. Okay, once I know how much A is worth, once I know how much B is worth, and once I know how much someone wants to pay for the business. Okay. <clears throat> right, so let's see. They say expect my partners may value goodwill. Goodwill is the intangible asset that the business generates over time and must or and can be and can be measured when a change in ownership occurs. Right, so the reason why someone's retiring could allow us to do a good well calculation if we wanted to. Because okay, we could determine, well, if we're going to pay out this partner X, um, what is that actually worth to the business? I think that's enough. Um, I just want to see if there's anything else in the textbook. Maybe we can just put a little note. Mm, I think that's fine. Yeah, they talk about the structural change before and after. So, uh, yeah, I think that's fine. That should be enough for three marks.